everything occurs in the presence of its opposite, and out of that there is generated the friction, the heat, and the light that all comes together in an indissoluble package as part of life. Part, I said. Part, walk into the gold vaults of the nations, into the secrets of kings, into the holy of holies. Power to make multitudes run squealing in terror at the touch of my little invisible finger. Even the moon frightened of me, frightened to death. The whole world frightened to death. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Elemental Philosophorum. I know that there's quite a bit of you out there that enjoy this episode, uh, this series, rather, sorry. And today we will be focusing on Cobalt. Of course, we have with us Camden, and of course, we have Mark from Altimedia United and My Family Thinks I'm Crazy podcast. How are you doing, guys? Doing good, doing good. Great. Thanks for uh, coming together. I think this will be the second one of the month, but next year maybe we'll get uh, in the flow and knock out some of these elements because there's so many more to get to that are really interesting. I learned about one yesterday on a podcast I was doing with Andreas Zertis. He said that vanadium is an indicator of emeralds, and people know from the Wizard of Oz series that Kansas is like the emerald city, right? Well, in Kansas, right. there's an incredible amount of vanadium, so there might be a bunch of emeralds in Kams- Kansas. <laughs> wow! So maybe well, we'll get like, to that. Did, they, the did they know that when they were making the movie? You know what I mean? Like it's very that's interesting. Probably, probably. Yeah. But yeah, I think this element series is very compelling, and and yeah, I I'm hoping that you know it comes together when we start doing like once we get like. 10, 15 elements, you know, we might start to see a, a big theme here. You know, I, I'm not right. sure where yet. I think right, that's exactly. what's going to emerge. No, that's a great way to put it because we might be able to take a step back and look at it collectively and say, holy crap, there's something here that connects to that and that you can only do once the, the data has been exchanged, right? And after the episodes have been put out there. But d- does anybody want to start, uh, start first, uh, take the floor? Well, I could say, give us a little intro to Cobalt, today's element of the day. The symbol is CO, it's atomic number 27. It's found in the Earth's crust. It's a hard, lustrous, bluish gray male, or metal, not male. (laughs) That's weird. Metal, and and yeah, it's, uh, it's used in all kinds of things, much like the last topic or element lithium it's used in a lot of electronics and batteries and lithium ion batteries to be p- more precise but yeah it's it's an interesting element as most uh, of them have been absolutely mm-hmm. and by the, by the way i think i just wanted to mention it's become a, a reoccurring theme for you to sort of start the each episode off with a definition coming from you mark so it's actually <laughs> i'm glad that you did that but cam brother you want to jump in or did you want me well, to well it's it's old and it's new because we know of mm-hmm. really and probably pop culture wise it's used a lot in uh, tesla's manufacturing for the electric cars but it's also been i mean it's been discovered as far back as in egypt culture still doing that blue uh hue that it's used for glassware and ceramics and stuff when they found it but it's been around and useful for most of human history which is which is just the fact that it's time you know not time dependent it's always been a piece of something that humans can use in some way seems very right. interesting Start with. Uh, well oh sorry you wanted to no 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 that's oh okay well speaking of time wa- timing and all that and you know the interesting occurrences of of of, of all this i um here basically we're, we're we'll go throughout the episode everything obviously that we each of us have found but one thing that i'll notice uh, before or i'll point out before going into this article here is if you take a look at the, the, a lot of these scientific articles regarding cobalt of new findings and i say that with air quotes a little bit have been published it's all from 2017 and onward we see this is 2018 here we see this one here is 2017 this one here is 2020 
this one here again a couple of these are peer-reviewed article outlets other ones are just you know extraterrestrial more you know element oriented websites but again we see here 2020 cobalt the forgotten mineral 2019 this one right over here 2019 again so Again, I find that interesting, but we'll see here, according to NewTrainGredients.com, health benefits of cobalt underappreciated, researchers argue. Cobalt is a mineral that doesn't get enough attention despite its ability to stimulate systemic antioxidants and anti-inflammatory processes, according to two American researchers. For millennia, cobalt gave the blue color found in Tang Dynasty ceramics and ancient Egyptian stained glass. In more recent human history, the mineral is a crucial component of the batteries powering an arguably indispensable daily gadget, the smartphone. Now, interestingly enough, I wanted to point out here that, again, the Tang Dynasty ceramics and ancient Egyptian stained glass we'll see if we you know continue this a little bit we'll find that there actually is a way in which cobalt can store information ultimately in some regards at the quantum level but again we'll get to that a little later interestingly enough we'll see here is that give me one second very quickly here we go citing studies and i quote that go back to the 1960s glade and megweed or megwide highlighted the minerals potential mechanisms in stimulating antioxidant defenses in humans and suppressing inflammation, though cobalt and cobalt compounds is cl are classified as, quote, possibly carcinogenic, end quote, by the International Agency for Research on Cancer of the WHO, which immediately makes me question that when it comes from them. Right. But, yeah. Glade and McGuid argued that the decision was, quote, based on extreme intakes in animal experiments, and there was no evidence of human carcinogenicity of cobalt and cobalt compounds. End quote. A number of investigations and expert panels have been conducted to confirm the safety of cobalt dietary supplementation in humans. So, again, it's interesting that, again, there seems to be a sort of faction that is pushing this down. And then at the same time, a faction that is at the same time simultaneously trying to prop it up. Again, it mm -hmm. seems that when the WHO, anything, any three letter agency or institution, FDA, the UN, what have you, is involved, clearly there's some type of attempt at, at you know, discrediting this element for other uses. But again, that's just sort of scratching the surface. But you guys want to jump in? Well, I find it's um, atomic mass and that 58.99, it's directly correlative to i mean it has so many isotopes and so many of the different isotopes you have actually distinct like uses and purposes right but that that cobalt 59 does not have a half-life a lot of these elements that we've gotten into have a uh, degradation they degrade whether it's i think all the way back to like tungsten taking like you know a couple billion years to degrade and then and then other ones with less time cobalt does not have a half-life in that in that stable form it doesn't lose anything but immediately after you know cobalt 61 and cobalt 58 their half-lives start to just, I mean, into nanoseconds on either side. So that's a very stable element in how it naturally occurs, yes, but not yeah. anywhere else. Right. Mark, you want to jump in or? Yeah, I was going to, you know, add that lithium, our element last week or last time we were here, has also kind of taken this weird place as a, I think the WHO recommends it as one of the primary salts that mineral salts that we need mm. in our diet. And it was only a couple of years ago that they made this decision, which is really strange considering lithium's use as an antidepressant uh, and possibly as like a numbing agent, as we kind of talked about in our last episode. But what was really synchronistic and this is kind of tangential to cobalt, not really, it's more about lithium. <laughs> What's really synchronistic is like the day after we released that episode about lithium, a huge podcast called Mysterious Universe did an episode called Lithium Crop Circles, and they found mm. that there are all of these signs of lithium and other rare elements within crop circles. You know, they didn't find it. They're reading a book about it. That's kind of the whole point of their show but either way i encourage people to check that out and it is strange that they're they want that the, they want these things in our body you know cobalt has a strange connection to copper which we haven't mm -hmm. examined yet but i think that will yield a lot of interesting information 
I agree. And, you know, that's where, like you put, we're getting a lot of today's cobalt supply from these copper veins down in Africa, which, you know, brings it into the social justice warrior, you know, zeitgeist, right. because they're very worried about that. But I think with good reason, because you know, I'm not in favor of colonization at all. But I do think that, you know, you can't avoid technology. You just have to embrace it. Like you can't say oh we're we're never going to use cobalt like it's just going to force that underground and there'll be a black market around absolutely, it absolutely you yeah. know so unfortunately yeah those mines are there and maybe we need to find better ways of doing it than the way they do it now with child labor but yeah that's it's interesting that cobalt kind of has a sort of shady sort of uh touchy yeah. sort of place on the table of elements for those reasons as as many positive public uses as they proclaim about it, mm. it still has that that underbelly, even while it is like very legal to do, which is interesting. Well, You're right. Going back to the point you made about its you know relevance in modern times versus its relevance in the past, I find you know that's worth going into totally yeah. separately. I've been talking about Tartaria a bunch on podcasts, you know. And I didn't right. expect that to come up at in this, you know, series at all. But somehow it did because a researcher by the name of Ari Asselin recently, I was in a podcast he does good with work. him. Paradigm threat. He yeah, does really good work. Very interesting, dude. And he he mentioned that like for the longest time, people didn't know what the color blue was, which I, I don't mm -hmm. totally agree with him there. I don't know how true it is. I mean, maybe he's right, maybe he's wrong. But when I looked into cobalt, I found something that kind of suggests this, that, you know, it was extremely rare to yeah. have blue dye or blue paint. So it was, ex it was very sought after. But one of the ways that Egyptians, like you mentioned, the Egyptians were using co cobalt, it was to create this blue color and you know like we mentioned cobalt and copper are found usually in the same places well how do you figure they got that blue color through the oxidation process of the copper so it wasn't necessarily the cobalt itself even though it does appear blue that did that it was more so the copper that was going on and you know copper is strange in the old world for sure i mean it, well uh, oh. go ahead Oh, so no, I just wanted to say with respects to cobalt and what you said about Tartaria, I appreciate you saying that. And the reason I do is because if I share my screen again here, we will see going back again to um, we'll see over here found in ancient Egypt, uh, ancient Egyptian stained glass and Tang Dynasty ceramics. I find interestingly enough, not just from the aspect or angle of it being a battery power source of some kind, you know, with, with what's being used in our iPhones or Androids these days, you name it. But I wonder again, if, and this is just, you could say this is anecdotal, this is taken out of context or within context, but when, for example, Jacques Vallée recently said on Kurt Jai Mungle's Theory of Everything podcast, he believes, if I'm not mistaken, he goes that consciousness and energy are two sides of the same coin. And he said that he basically believes, whether it's simulation theory, electric universe theory, you name it, he believes that currently, or rather he ideologically subscribes to the possibility we are in a, what he called an information structure. Now, I find it interesting that cobalt, relative to the way in which we use our smartphones, that quantum physics has warned us to think about the way in which things like our web browser and our software applications are parallel to that of what quantum physicists are studying with respect to what makes up this universe or at least this reality they're finding sim similarities and i wonder again cobalt not even being a, a sort of mechanism to use for battery generation not only that but if ancient uh, human civilizations or cultures maybe stored some type of information in some form or another within the stained glass or, you know, ceramics, if you want to call it. Now, I could be very wrong. I'm just trying to, you know, think outside the box here. But and then when we jump on over to this right over here, sciencedirect.com, Again, we'll see here a glance at antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties of dietary cobalt. Again, February 2018, this was published. We'll see here cobalt, an underappreciated dietary essential. So, I mean, I, when I look at this, uh, again, I, I can't help but think, like you guys were saying, there seems to be a propping up of it because it seems like it almost can't be suppressed from the surface uh, level of you know, the world, really, that it does do good things. But there seems to be a limit. 
there seems maybe I'm wrong, but there seems to be some type of loosely organized force that is saying no to certain kinds of funding with respects to cobalt. Right. And that could also be possibly because it leads to information structures or objects holding much larger forms of knowledge because of events like Tartaria, maybe. You see what I'm saying here? Why that memory could be stored. Mm. And then things like Tartaria occur with respect to the destruction of it. And then using cobalt as just one simple, uh, amongst many other things, element to store information. Just, you know, just a thought of mine, but yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, I think the uh, Tartaria connection was being made that, you know, very, very loosely. I couldn't follow what Ari was saying, but what's interesting, you know, and that's not a slight against Ari. It's just I wasn't, you know, capable right, right. of following the number of things he was yeah, it's talking about. Yeah, actually a compliment to him kind of saying. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, yeah. Had, he had so much going on in one conversation that this was just one little piece that I pulled out of it. But it's interesting that he noted that Homer described, you know, the sea as wine red and the sky as green. And like, you don't really have a lot of people using the t- color blue as a term even in ancient languages. So we find it extremely rare and then also associated with royalty, right? A lot of royalty right. wore blue because of how rare it was. Um, and even mining, you know, mining was not something that everybody took part in. So that was sort of a status too, to have metal. But yeah, it's, it's interesting. There's also cobalt deficiency. Have you guys looked into that at all and how people have issues? Certain farmers have issues with their cattle not having enough cobalt in their diet. Mm. Wow, I'm looking it up. I'm checking it out right now. It's an essential trace element is a constituent of vitamin B12, cobalamin or cobalamin. Essentially, the insufficiency can cause several disease symptoms, according to all nutriments.blogspot.com. Again, 2017, I think, including per, pernicious, pernicious anemia, hyper homo cystinemia, neuropsychiatric manifestations and goiter. Let me share my screen real quick. Sorry, guys. And goiter, I think it's pronounced. The co-atom in cobalamin is attached and surrounded to a deoxyadenosyl group, methyl group, and a cyano group or hydroxyl group. Hmm. Cobalt as cobalamin is essential for several body functions, nitrate, carbonate, or sulfate. It's in its salt forms, excuse me. Cobalt chloride, nitrate, carbonate, or salt is required for vitamin B12 synthesis by bacteria. Huh. Now, what's interesting in, in, my, in some of my findings is you see that, that nitrate that it pairs with. The, the element cobalt does not react with halogens of nitrogen or hydrogen, some of those most basic elements that we have. So, because right. I saw this nitrate, it's actually not, it's reacting with nitrate with nitrogen in that compound in kind of like a ferrofluid way where right. it's pushing away everything else, but the nitrate, because it's not reacting with the nitrate at all, not pushing it away or pulling it towards it like a magnet that they're almost combined. They're almost, but they're, but it's not reacting with it at all. So it can just like sit there right next to it. Which right. is so interesting. Nitrogen and hydrogen are the only two elements that cobalt doesn't react with at all. That's okay. That's interesting because, sorry, Mark, I didn't mean no, to. Go ahead. If you're going to, I was just thinking here as well to add to what Camden just said. It says here the cobalamin synthesis by bacteria actively takes place in the rumen of ruminants or rumen. In other non ruminant herbivores and humans, cobalt. Cobalamin is synthesized by bacteria in the colon. Very small quantities of vitamin B12 is absorbed in the colon, and some animals resort to ingesting feces to obtain the nutrient. What I find interesting about this specifically is that if there is any type of way in which cobalt can actually hold some type of information structure through an electromagnetic frequency, again, having to do with the gut, of specifically with humans, 
that, that when if we look at this from an esoteric perspective, allegedly the gut within humans is extremely significant and important, right? In a spiritual sense, whether it's with the 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 the, the Kabbalah tree, the chakras, you name it. The right. gut is allegedly used for again the the sort of intuitive angle of things, and that's also allegedly that you know alleged thing called a starts a d apparently is it, the glands of that are yeah are, are based in the stomach allegedly. So, uh, it, yeah, I mean, I, I, look I mean, at right all this. there to say it influences DNA synthesis. I we we do know that. I mean, you're always producing more DNA as a as a sentient being, right? You're replacing. Right old DNA structures. So like if for it to be an integral part of the DNA synthesis of in organ meat, yeast, fish, poultry, milk products, I'm, I mean, we're not told how much we use cobalt. It seems like to me, everyone talks about, you know, the electric cars and using it for batteries and all of this, but uh, we need it from everything from paint because it literally still is used to make some of that blue pigment in a lot of paint to need it in our diets to need it for DNA synthesis. I mean, there we're, it seems like we're not told that cobalt matters for all this because what they want it to be focused on, Hey, we might have to use all the cobalt in the whole world to make it your Tesla battery. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I, that's a very good point. Well, we find, you know, with all of these elements, depending on their properties, yeah, they, they're they immensely important in so many different areas and are valued and fought over and sought yeah. after. And, you know, the, the geographical locations where they're found are often like kept sort of not secret, but it seems like they keep the the process of of finding this stuff kind of hidden like for specialized few who go into that science you know of of finding right. you know cuz it it's i mean it's really fascinating the remote places that some of these elements are found in i can imagine you know when you're surveying for this kind of stuff it could be a little bit like indiana jones absolutely <laughs> absolutely um yeah no i i wanted to go on with some things i found but i wanted to give uh, mark brother a chance if you wanted to jump yeah, in. Yeah, well, I was going to also, I mean, this might be uh, going away from all the great points you guys just made, but they they point out that the ore that cobalt was found where they create cobalt from or get it from, the ore is a German word for goblin ore, which made me think yeah, of... Yeah, I saw that. It, it made me think of this strange sighting in Kentucky where... For those from Kentucky or who are aware of Kentucky, you might know there's a lot of caves in Kentucky. Mm. And there was this sighting of goblins in Kentucky in Hopkinsville. It's a very strange sighting that took place in 1955 where these people um, saw a what emerged from some something like a silver saucer, these goblins that, you know, did something and then re-entered the vehicle and took off right that's what the let, let me see but no yeah and but the goblin connection at least in the name is it, i'm trying to make sure i don't want to say it wrong is it from german german mm -hmm. yeah okay so that makes you think immediately well so what what kind of what kind of, you know, Kentucky goblins are over in Germany, right? What, where, why, why, why goblin for this blue cobalt when, I mean, goblins, goblins, I don't think of as blue, you know, off the. Yeah. There might be something mythological to it. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, mining, going in caves, gnomes, right. elves, like all these kind of creatures are associated with the underworld or underground and. And obviously with all the value we can find mining, it makes sense that they mm -hmm. would sort of consider these beings as like keepers of some sort of power, whether metaphysical or just purely physical. I think that's up to the observer. But yeah, the uh, the reports about this goblin are associated with not a UFO, but like a flying saucer, I guess, a flying right. ship. I don't know. Mm. It, maybe I'm not reading from the best article here, but it's no, just uh, an interesting connection, I guess. That's no, that's fantastic. I really appreciate you bringing that up because it actually 
reminded me of something I forgot to bring up earlier, mm. thanks to, to Camden, actually, which was, again, the isotope angle of things. And you'll see how I'll bring this full circle when, again, I know that specifically in our community, I'm, I'm rambling on about this guy. But when Jacques Vallée said on Joe Rogan that the isotopes in which the metals that shot off of some of the craft were discovered, that the, the isotopic structure was so pure and so complex it was it not be it was not able to be understood by any of the labs in which these metal these metallurgies were sent to now interestingly enough if we take a look over here at pubmed.ncbi.nlm.nih.gov, August 2nd, 2017, effects of electromagnetic fields exposure on the antioxidant defense system. Now, one of the things I want to point out here is that cobalt with respects to electromagnetic fields seems to only be studied or funded in the official sense to be looked into from a medical antioxidant perspective. There doesn't seem to be any other type of, you know, um, like, branch off if you want to call it that of funding with respects to this now we'll see here that uh, and i quote technological devices have become essential components of daily life however their deleterious effects on the body particularly on the nervous system are well known emf fields have various chemical effects including causing deterioration in large molecules and cells and imbalance in ionic equilibrium now let's keep in mind ionized air pockets is what allegedly these beings use in some cases or in many cases to help them i guess use traversable wormholes to travel and things like that now if we bring it back to mark your your um your your contextual example story there rather of the the elves in this ancient text or the was it no goblins no, sorry goblins uh, goblins yes thank you <laughs> coming off of this disc uh, disc shaped craft I can't help but think that when we look at EMF effects of certain studies like this and we expand that not using imagination but pure you know attempting to do unbiased speculation and extrapolation it makes us think why wouldn't this have been used in one of those instances as a type of, of, of element that could store information, EMF fields, you name it. And I bring this up because the example, the story you mentioned, brother, was about how these goblins got off the craft and they, what did they do again before getting back on the craft? So I, I kind of, I must have read the uh, bad article. I should have did a little bit more digging before I brought this up. But, oh, no, no so what, what happened was seven people were in a farmhouse in Kentucky in a rural mining town and they lived near an abandoned mine where the goblins were seen around. And there was a gunfire fight where, you know, allegedly this Sutton family had, you know, started shooting. They saw a shooting star in the sky and a flying saucer. And then about 8 p.m., the family started hearing strange and unexplained noises outside. The family dog, which was in the yard, began barking loudly and hid under the house where it remained until the next day. Going out a few minutes later with their guns, Billy Ray and Elmer Sutton then asserted that they were they saw a strange creature emerge from the nearby trees. When the creature approached to within 20 feet, the two men began shooting at it, one using a shotgun, the other a 22 rifle. There was a noise sounding like bullets being rattled about in a metal drum, and the creature, they said, then flipped over and fled into the darkness and shadows. Sure that they had wounded the creature, Lucky and Solomon. Is that the same? Those aren't the same names. <clears throat> no, I mean, that's of the seven people, I guess, maybe. Yeah. You know? Okay, yeah. Went out to look for it. And they write that as the men were stepping from the porch, they saw one of the creatures perched on an awning. They again shot at the creature, and it was knocked from the roof, hearing the rattling noise, although the creature was apparently unharmed. Let's see. And then it talks about the creature getting shot at one more time before seeing them near this uh, flying saucer. Right. So, but they live near an abandoned mine. And when I looked up the amount of cobalt, in Kentucky, there are five cobalt mines in Kentucky. I don't know. I mean, it's kind of relatively mm. few compared to other states, but Kentucky's right. not as big as some of these other states listed. So it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely interesting that the cobalt is called a goblin ore. 
that's that that that's a great connection to make because it's not again if we go strictly by the book with respects to the way that surface level academia sees as research we're only going to confine ourselves to ex- what they found right so when mm. you you making those connections that's that's incredible before i i jump in again camden did you want to did you have anything or well, it's it, the the connection of these goblins. I mean, that's all after the fact, right? So when we, I mean, from when it was originally named Cobalt to be connected to goblins, the yeah. the toxic fumes that came off of the original German mines where they found Cobalt ore, that was that uh, one of the reasons they've said, at least, I mean, this is, you know, back to that urban legend myth, whatever it, maybe they were seeing real goblins, right? But some of the urban legend is that these toxic fumes from when they started to smelt this Cobalt for the first time was people were seeing shit. And so right. then and a goblin in those mines while they're smelting, oh, no, this is a toxic, you know, thing. We have to be careful. While it is verifiably toxic, I, I did make sure that it wasn't like them confused that they were, that they were, you know, breathing toxic fumes. It is toxic. It is something that in its blue pigment state that we use to dry stuff, it technically has some radioactive decay. So it is technically toxic, whereas it, it's weird that they would hallucinate whole ass like entities and goblins and things that they were saying when they first discovered it as if they, I mean, to me seems more like they actually were probably seeing actual things just like this Kentuckian family. You know what I mean? So uh, that's, that's interesting that there's that consistency of, I mean, even if there's only five mines in Kentucky, I mean, they're so, still mines. Right. And, To be more specific, the word uh, goblin comes from this word kobold, which is very similar to cobalt, right? Kobold is the German word for goblin or hobgoblin. So, yeah, it is it is very strange. But for those who maybe aren't versed in like mythology, what you do learn when you learn about these like little creatures like a goblin is they're associated with different elements and different landscapes. And I think that is, you know, a great point to make because yeah, it's totally possible that when they were going and searching for these things in the ground in the 15th, 16th, 17th centuries, maybe they were, you know, also having these strange experiences like the ones Mm -hmm. in Hopkinsville. They didn't have rifles probably to shoot at the Mm -hmm. beings, but they... uh, (laughs) They, they, I mean, geez, yeah, I, there's a lot of information here when you look up cobalt, but wow. Yeah, that's that's a little startling considering what I told you guys beforehand. <laughs> before you know what I mean? Recording. Yeah. No, well, and to, to add to that, actually, sorry, did, Camden, did you want to jump in? Well, or? No, I mean, what, what he was getting into immediately was the, I believe when he was talking about what he told us beforehand, he knows of people that have medical uses for actual, like, you know, uh, have to put a... If you're doing a knee replacement or doing a hip replacement or, or those kinds of things, they have to right. use a cobalt, cobalt alloy in you. And that would immediately, I, I, cause I've never, I'd never heard of that before you start talking about the people that you knew. It makes me want to know, you know, what isotope of cobalt did they use? How did like, wh- what even made someone decide, Hey, these, this toxic fume thing that we're smelting and seeing hobgoblins in caves to at some point say yeah but it would make a really good knee <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that that's that's a good that, yeah I, uh, very good or even very the, good point. that implant would carry some of that magical energy that's what i yeah exactly yeah. like where ooh, wow. yeah speaking well speaking of that whole angle of esotericism and magical energy if we take a look here oceanopportunity.com this is a person reviewing a book written by will hart called ancient alien ancestors advanced technologies that terraformed our world This is a follow-up to his book, The Genesis Race, which was put out in 2011. Now, interestingly enough, we'll see here. Let me see very quickly. Here we go. He he basically, it's a bit of a synopsis of the book, but we'll see here that he says, and I quote, one particularly interesting topic touched upon is the chemical element cobalamin, commonly known as vitamin B12. Its presence within every cell of our bodies for energy production is well understood. However, quite interestingly, the element cobalt, which forms the backbone of cobalamin, is an incredibly rare element here at Earth's surface and only obtained through our diet. 
Recognizing that cobalt is critical for energy storage and production, it should be no surprise that Earth was seeded with prokaryotic life that made good use of cobalt. And perhaps it was recognized that despite cobalt being rare at the surface, there are rich sources of cobalt here on Earth, deep water thermal vents. In fact, today, cobalt is being sought through deep sea mining initiatives, given its utility in making efficient batteries. This will prove to be a massive market as we look to sustainable alternative energy sources. Our ancestors almost certainly knew about the importance of cobalt for harnessing energy, which is why it is engineered as a part of us to our modernized diets and further substantiates where we are likely to find remnants of ancient civilizations, perhaps even Atlantis lost deep within the ocean and in proximity to the thermal vents, which release cobalt. Cobalt may have been, and will be again, the key element to traverse space and time End quote. I mean, wow. That's, that's interesting. The fact that cobalt mines are near where uh, allegedly Atlantis was. I mean, and if we, we can actually corroborate that one step further with Graham Hancock and Randall Carlson's work that also is consistent with respects to the glacial, I, I forgot the, I think glacial compressions. Please forgive me if that's not the exact term. In North America you're talking about? I believe so with I respect so, to yeah. the concept of, of compression where Atlantis fell mm-hmm. and then the other side lifted. And interestingly enough, we'll find that it's also consistent with the same location that Plato said Atlantis was located in. So again, it could, could be science fiction. I'm not saying it's real, but we have three different, what I would call data points that, that could substantiate this and lead us to a handful of conclusions that may not be that of what is the official narrative. Right. Mm. Very interesting. Yeah. I mean, that what comes to mind is an, a conversation I had with the author Brad Olson, and he talked about the strange copper mines that were found in the Great Lakes area. And we know from what we said earlier that cobalt and copper are found usually in the same places. Cobalt forms in the same mines that copper does, right? So right, it's it's interesting, but kind of more interesting to us so I, i'm reading here during the 19th century a significant part of the world's production of cobalt blue a pigment made with cobalt compounds and alumina and smalt cobalt glass powdered for the use of pigment purposes in ceramics and painting was carried out in norwegian or a norwegian place i'm not going to try to pronounce this blah far var I just did. The first mines for the production of smalt in the 16th century were located in Norway, Sweden. And then it goes on to say they discovered some in New Caledonia, which is off the coast of Australia. And then they discovered it in a huge deposit in Ontario uh, in 1904. And that pretty much put an end to the Norwegian uh, market because they had so much of it up there in that Canadian shield. Wow. I just wanted to say very quickly as well that I just I'm reading here allegedly China the CCP they're big into cobalt in Africa. Oh yeah, um, they seem to be somehow big into no matter what element we're going to talk about. Yeah, really. Yeah, it seems like they understand, or maybe they don't, or but I would dare to say they understand that maybe minerals are the way of future currency in a I'll real long term form. I found I don't know the proper title of this book but it was something like an atlas of china and it was huge i mean the book was like three feet tall it was a huge book and it was up on this top shelf and i pick it up off i'm in this used bookstore and they have all of these maps of china with these little like sections you see the symbols for each element and where you can find it in china so to your point Yes, they are very interested in the world's mineral resources. I mean, you know, the dragon energy, right? It comes to mind, mm. that dragon. What do they say about dragons? They're, they're the guardians of gold and silver and all these other things, right? And I just wanted to say very quickly as well, too, for those that are uh, listening or watching on the Gen Z side of things, and more specifically those within the Patreon, you'll know the sort of connection to that of the dragon, which is, you know, that esoteric angle of the serpent, the naga, whatever you like to refer to it amongst different ancient, you know, ancestral human civilizations that, again, as, as our good friend Mark just said, the dragons, at least in that culture, seem to be protecting minerals. And I wondered, you know, dragons, reptilians, 
that whole, you know, angle there of some type of interdimensional, you know, possessive being, if you will, you can call them the archons or something like this. I, I That's where my mind kind of wanders to, not that it's mm. not saying that's factual at, at all, but that's just, you know, just a valid, it's a valid connection, really, it seems like. So yeah, absolutely. Anybody else want to jump in? Because if, if I'm being honest with you guys, I think I have one or two more articles on it, but nothing necessarily. It's a, it's abundance in the solar system versus the earth is very interesting to me. A lot of these elements we've talked about you know as much as there is on earth there's there's an astronomical more amount out there in the universe out there in the solar system cobalt occurs at about 20 29 or 20 25 parts per million in the earth's crust and soil right wow whereas in the rest of the solar system they can only verify it occurs at about four parts per million so it is a it occur it is here with more frequency than the rest Mm. of the solar system, it seems like. Wow. And it's another one. That's interesting. It's another one of these elements that we find in meteors, much like the meteoric iron that we were talking about. I think tungsten even is found in some meteors, but yeah, very interesting stuff. I think, you know, the the problem I'm starting to have with this, maybe it's my own problem of not being prepared enough. Like I said at the beginning, I'll do my best next time. But there is so much, like just looking you at it here. You can just go, 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 go. Yeah, I know there's so mean. much, man. But I think that's kind of to my point that I made at the beginning. Like we're going to start to notice several themes that emerge as we look at more and more elements. I think the military has come up a lot and it's definitely it's definitely here too it's present i mean one little snippet is that the united states military tried to secure a Mm -hmm. constant supply of cobalt uh before world war ii and they found it in blackbird canyon in idaho but they also mentioned that the germans have the germans were the same strategy right you wonder if they if they saw the germans doing it and were like not even knowing that they needed mm. cobalt, but we're like, yo, they're getting cobalt. What's <laughs> yeah. this for? We need to, yeah, you know what I mean? Or if they, there is nothing, there's only one, I've, the, one of the most interesting pieces of information that I found though, in all of this was that there's only one mine in the entire world that exclusively only mines cobalt. Like every other, all these other mines, they'll find cobalt, but they'll still find copper, but they'll still find nickel. But you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Morocco is the only place that has a mine that only finds cobalt. And that's not a place we've mentioned in any of this before, you know, and from Kentucky to Idaho to China to Germany. Morocco right. is, a, is the only place that exclusively has just cobalt in its mine. And so that's weird that that occurs just freely there but it doesn't seem to occur on its own anywhere else right right i i just wanted to mention as well very quickly the lack of cobalt on earth relative to you know in space and whatnot or or thereof because i wonder if again cobalt being that significant if it could be used and i'm sure it is in in much more advanced settings or scenarios if there is again this is a bit of a stretch here relative to what some people's the train of thought but the, the you know the, the alleged galactic federation the well, interplanetary no, I, don't think it, I don't think it is a stretch i mean we talked already right. about how it's ferromagnetic or ferrofluid type of thing that it it seems to have innate properties that will even if you're talking about anti-grav, remember I said that yes. it, it, it doesn't react, it won't react, it will keep it just next to it, that right. hydrogen or that nitrogen. And then you right. combine that with all of the weird connections to Atlantis and Atlantis yeah. adjacent cultures. I mean, one thing I forgot to mention is the, the you know, on the topic of the color blue, the Celtic barbarians, they gave their, you know, there was a color barbarian blue because of them. They would mm. paint themselves blue and... There's a lot of theories that show that Ireland has a very strange connection to Atlantis, and it makes sense considering. It makes sense with you know, that blue. I mean, we call it the Atlantic Ocean, right? So it's not, yeah. you know, Morocco, <laughs> Ireland, yeah. you know, and I'm sure that there's more copper, and, you know, and obviously we didn't even get to the big, you know, the big information you'll find we kind of touched on at the beginning but the democratic republic of congo congo and their mm-hmm. you know really i mean unfortunate political 
um, affairs, what's going on there, you know, not partly their fault because it is co- the forces of colonialism that are doing that. But yeah, it's it's really interesting the the effect that these elements have on on our world from ancient to modern times. And you're right. And but even you said you know ancient to modern, we have the. I mean, it's a, it's it's occurred naturally because tobacco plants absorb it in tobacco and mm. cigarettes. It's but it's, it's been the all smoke. the way. Yeah, literally. It's mm-hmm. exactly. I, I also wanted to mention as well that with respect to the Galactic Federation and the ICC, the, the alleged interplanetary corporate conglomerates with respects to, you know, asteroid mining and things like that. I find it interesting that if we see over here, there is a very significant use of cobalt going back to pubmed.ncbi.nlm.nh.gov with respects to ELFs, extremely low frequencies. Exposure with respects to cobalt to ELFs seems to actually work quite well at least based on this particular this this peer-reviewed article here and i find that interesting because again we know the secrecy or we at least we would think we'd like to know the secrecy behind elfs extremely low frequencies that don't really make its way into the public eye be in terms of discussion at all but the military Mm -hmm. uses it for psychotronic weapons like there's no tomorrow so again like you said the military trying to you know secure prior to world war ii if i'm not mistaken a cobalt mine uh mark you said and i mean it seems about right with respects to messing with extremely low frequencies that is not even on the spectrum of the surface level understanding of how we can detect them and that seems to be something right in front of our faces that you know the masses should be pissed off about and say to the world leaders hold on you're conducting experiments with elfs extremely low frequencies and we don't know what it's doing where it's going if it's among us right now i mean quick quick case in point bottled water who we had on a couple months back when he said that you know elf frequencies and weapons could you know one thing he could speak on was one psychotro or one device that could literally when aimed at you and fired and it doesn't fired anything uh, visible to, right, on, uh, yeah, yeah. in our senses makes you have to literally you know part of my english go take a shit you can't yeah, control you it you shit your pants from it um, and interestingly enough sorry one more thing ha- that weapon that he spoke of having you to you know uh, actually go use the re- the bathroom keep that keep in mind that connection between the stomach and the intestines and cobalt as we discussed maybe 40 minutes ago that whole angle there right of yeah. how it affects specifically the colon areas of the of the body so you know, well, maybe well, cobalt, the, yeah. The you got into military, how military is using it and stuff. I just found this. I didn't even, I didn't even catch it earlier. I thought I would have seen this earlier. Cobalt is used in research projects to. I want to quote it to be sure. Used to make the skin of robots called magnetosperms. Whoa. Magnetosperms developed in 2014. The robots wiggle like a sperm when they respond to a magnetic field. And that is just that there is no, I went to, you know, looked up magnetosperms just now and all that. There's no devoted or, or, you know, explicitly stated, Hey, we use these magnetosperms to, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's just building into, you know, well, we'll, we love to try to get banned anyways, but (laughs) yo, this seems to be some, some nanobots technology here. And we know from our conspiratorial groups where everyone seems to be adverse to those. Yes. Yeah. Like, I mean, we see here, look at the tasks, fabrication of magnetosperms using electro spinning. Uh, again, we can connect that to, you know, yeah. Dan Winter with the spin and all that, even Walter Russell, the centripetal and centrifugal forces, but as well, the characterization of the propulsive force, frequency response, and the magnetization, they, the electro spinning workstation in, in MNR lab. They have to be fabricated. There is no, mm. you know, it's not like these can naturally appear. It's not like these have, I mean, they're literally, they're coded down there with familiarity of programming, especially MATLAB and C++. I mean, they, they speak mm. with computer code, it seems like is what I just said. Well, I mean, that would substantiate the connection, the alleged connection of Jacques Vallée, you know, saying that he believes at least we live in information structures. Right. So, wow, dude, this is a, Cam, the great connection on this one. Holy crap. Yeah, no, that's why I said I was surprised I didn't find it earlier. It just, uh, I, 
It just popped up because that, I mean, that's a good one. That's, that's one of the a really big connection. And this is there. a German, absolutely. And a German university based in Cairo, Egypt, it seems. That's yeah, well, interesting. The Germans are the ones that found it. The Germans are the ones using it during World War II. I mean, yeah. Wow. This is incredible. The magnetic dipole moment of the microparticles is characterized using an electromagnetic system and a force sensor at the micro scale. Uh, we, in addition, we experimentally demonstrate closed loop motion control of the microparticles or the magnetosperms under the influence of the controlled magnetic field gradient in three dimensional space. space. But it's still, it wow. doesn't say, hey, we could use these really well mm -hmm. to, I don't know, um, uh, th we could send them, since they're sperms, we could send them into people with some kind of, you know, new birth control that would stop. But, you know, like they don't even say right. a devoted use for any of this. They just say, hey, we can make these cobalt spermies react with magnets, just in case you were wondering. Like, <laughs> But wow. there's no funding for anything else beyond that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. They'll yeah. find a use where there's a will, there's a way, I'm sure. Oh, they have. They just don't want to tell us. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, that's, I gotta say, if, if I don't know, Mark brother, if you want to add anything, but if that's not a great way to, to end it off, I, I don't know what is. No, yeah, we can call it there. I think there's so much more, like I said, there's always so much more, but, uh, I'm thinking, you know, we should go into hydrogen the next time we come together in the new sure. year, because it seems like hydrogen and having a good understanding of it will give us like a bigger or better understanding of a lot of the other elements. Because that is, I mean, I, I correct me if I'm wrong. Element. I think that's really your base for a lot of a lot of any elemental reactions with anything. That that right. hydrogen is your is your starting point, literally. Right, and we we right. talked about <laughs> lithium last week, which is very close to uh, hydrogen on the, yeah. the table, and the table's mm -hmm. set up in a a meaningful way, you know. But yeah, I don't. I don't fully understand I, it, but go ahead. Right. Well, I just wanted to say, Mark, I mean, uh, you make a great point when you said that how we don't necessarily cover everything about every element. But I think one of the nice things about that actually is that I don't think we necessarily have to. I think once we move forward and covering just a few more elements, we can take a step back and look at that big picture and say, OK, it's not necessarily about covering everything about every element, but rather finding the key connections mm -hmm. and then saying, OK, looking at it once we've completed or close to completed covering all the different elements on the table right. and saying where can this fit where can this and go it's not even it's not even us it's i mean we we have the, it's not just us doing this we have a community and a research team of 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 people that are watching this with us and right. this is just starting them on all these holes to go look into too and so i, I hope they, say, they I don't, continue yeah. to participate because that's super important i mean I think there's a, a, a list of like the big elements that we really haven't touched on yet. And hydrogen might be the first. And I'm, well, I'm kind of glad that. we haven't gone on those really big elements yet. We've, you know what I mean? Cause those, those we know we'll find stuff for, so to speak. I think this but, has helped us hone our skills and trying to find absolutely. little, yeah. Little like minute details that you would not normally find on a basic Google search, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I was even thinking like the alchemical ones, gold, silver, tin, exactly. mercury, yeah. you know, these right. ones that have like more than just the significance physically, they, they really take on. And we're seeing that with iron and, and other tungsten, even cobalt here mm -hmm. today, this strange consciousness element, as Jacques Fillet put, you know, and these elements are just forms of energy. I mean, if that's how we're yeah. going to evaluate the world, but... Yeah, agreed that this is a great place to close it. And thank you guys for joining me again. I look forward to the next one on hydrogen. Always. No, brother, thank you so much. And uh, of course, Camden, and we'll catch everybody else in probably uh, the new year for the next Elemental Philosophorum episode. Cheers, everybody. Alchemy, as I'm sure many of you know, is really the secret tradition of the redemption of spirit from matter. But many of you may imagine that alchemy is simply a, a discredited pre-scientific obsession of unbalanced minds interested in changing base metals into gold, lead into the stuff of common. This is the benighted reputation that alchemy has acquired in a century so given over to the literal and
the material and the non-spiritual, that it's lost all touch with the adumbrations of meaning that vibrate behind uh, the perceptions of the ultimate.